Today we're going to talk about why I don't want to see your x-rays or MRIs. Wait, I want to see them. Dude, you are such a perv. They don't call me bony for nothing. I've been working with people with aches and pains and movement problems since 2007 or 2008. Looks like you're having memory problems, dude. Hey man, wait until you're in your early 40s and see how well your brain works. Oh wait, you don't have a brain. And one thing that has happened from the very beginning and continues to happen is people keep saying, hey, would you take a look at my x-ray or MRI and tell me whether or not you think there's any hope? There have always been a couple big problems with people asking me to read their x-rays and MRIs. The first biggest problem is that I am not a radiologist, so I'm not trained to look at an x-ray or MRI. The second big problem is something that any radiologist or well-read doctor will tell you. What you see in an x-ray or MRI can be extremely, extremely misleading and have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on with your aches and pain. Later in this video, I'm gonna talk about an MRI I got on my hip joints and why the whole experience made me laugh. If you've had a memorable X-ray or MRI experience, share it down in the comment section. For decades, conventional medical wisdom was to do X-rays and MRIs on your spine to tell you the cause of your back pain. Doctors would look at your X-rays and see arthritis and degeneration all over your spine and tell you, stop moving. If your back hurts, stop moving or you will make everything worse and it's all going to just crumble and fall apart. Uh, that's a little dramatic. It was super dramatic and that kind of talk scared a lot of people into stopping moving and getting spinal surgeries which were supposed to fix their back pain. But over the decades, research showed that what you saw in x-rays and MRIs didn't actually line up with symptoms. Some people could have terrible looking spines and still have no problem. Researchers also found that surgeries to fix alleged spinal problems were not really as effective as they were marketed to be. And so today, when you have back pain, doctors will tell you, keep moving, do not just rest in bed because you'll make things worse. And also don't use x-rays and MRIs as a first line of investigation because once you have those scary looking images in front of you, you're going to make people think that they are worse than they are. Because for so long the general public was brainwashed by their doctors to believe that the x-rays and MRIs were the gospel and the truth about what's happening with your spine, everybody now believes that. But the research clearly shows that all the degeneration that you see in people's spines is often completely asymptomatic and there's no way to determine whether or not what you see in the x-ray and MRI actually relates to any kind of discomfort that people have in their back. What about in their butts? I think you're talking about the hip joint and the hip joint is the same story. You can see x-rays and MRIs of people's hips and you can't get any useful information from them. Doctors will often say the bone shape determines whether or not you have hip pain, but multiple studies have shown that there is no correlation between bone shape and actual range of motion or pain problem. In addition, there was a big study on hip osteoarthritis and what they found was x-ray evidence of osteoarthritis in the hip did not correlate with symptoms, meaning you could have severe looking osteoarthritis in your hip and you might not have any symptoms at all, even though the x-ray predicts you should have a lot of problems. The same story is true in the knees. A big study showed that there was no correlation between what you saw in an x-ray and symptoms in the knee. You could look at somebody's x-ray and they could be literally bone on bone, so bad, the worst arthritis possible, and they might not have any symptoms and be walking around without any problems. Can we go back to the hip, please? Why, why do you want to go back to the hip? If you have x-rays of your butt, please email them to me. Don't listen to him. Hey, I want to take a quick second to say thank you to Norma, Laura, and Margaret for your generous donations on my website. If you want to support this channel too, use the donate link you'll find in the description box or the join and thanks buttons you find on YouTube. And if you haven't already, sign up for my newsletter on my website at uprighthealth.com slash newsletter. All right, let's get back to it. And before I forget, the shoulder's really not any different. You can have all kinds of alleged issues and x-rays and MRIs on your shoulder and have no symptoms. It's important to remember that how the medical industry interprets images of your bones changes over time. For example, for many decades, they used to say the shape of your acromion process, which is this little tip out here, was a really big deal. And if you had the wrong shaped bone up here, that was the cause of your shoulder pain when you tried to lift your arm out to the side or straight up over head. And so for many decades, if you had trouble lifting your arm up overhead, you were told you probably needed to get surgery to reshape that bone. The only problem is after a few decades, they discovered that a fake placebo sham surgery was just as effective as the real bone shaving surgery. And the shape of your acromion didn't seem to have anything at all to do with whether or not you had a range of motion problem or pain. 
But don't worry, you can still find plenty of surgeons who still believe that outdated information and will still operate on your acromion and reshape it to help you out. Now, I'm not arguing that x-rays and MRIs are totally useless. I'm just saying that in the case of chronic joint pain, they can be extraordinarily misleading and in fact, worse than misleading. And worse than misleading is not just my opinion, that's also the opinion of many physicians. They actually will tell you that doing an x-ray or MRI on somebody's spine to identify the cause of their back pain can actually be worse than doing nothing because the patient will fixate on the images and be more fearful and think that they are damaged and broken and hopeless. And if you're trying to empower somebody to fix themselves, to get out of pain, to give them some hope that their pain will at some point end and they'll be able to live a normal life, you don't wanna fixate on an X-ray or MRI that shows you stuff that probably has nothing to do with their pain. And remember how in the 70s and 80s, doctors would say, oh, if you have back pain, stop moving, stop moving, just get the surgery, you're gonna hurt yourself. That whole line of thinking has totally changed and now they say keep moving, keep exercising. Why? Because the muscles around your spine are super important and we were ignoring them for decades so we could just cut into things and allegedly fix you. Which is why I say ATM always think muscles. If you're dealing with chronic joint pain, then you got to think about your muscles. Your muscles move your bones, your bones cannot move themselves. If I get headaches because I'm ramming my knuckles into the side of my head day after day after day, you're not gonna do surgery to reshape my forehead. You're gonna make my muscles do something different, like maybe move the arm away from my head. If your arm bone keeps running into another bone here prematurely, you're gonna wanna work on training the muscles to move the bone smoothly so the two bones don't collide. And remember that muscles themselves can also hurt. If you have very weak atrophied muscles, guess what? They ache. And then you're subject to aye, which is short for atrophy-induced immobility. If you don't have the strength to move your body parts, you will be immobile. And this medical reversal on what to do about back pain is also why I say don't get caught in rips. Rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery are not good long-term solutions. When you dig deeper into all these treatments for joint pain, you discover that, wait a minute, there's not a lot of evidence. So if you're sitting there fixating on your x-rays and MRIs and wondering whether or not I can read them in a way that's gonna make you feel better, don't send your x-rays and MRIs to me. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a radiologist, I don't care. If there is something horribly, terribly wrong, like cancer is eating away at the bone, I'm not gonna be of any help. But if it's something else like, oh, you might have a little bit of arthritis, or maybe it's a little deformed, or it's a little too narrow, or it's a little too fat, or it's a little too thin, or it looks a little bit too out of place, or it looks one millimeter too little. Then remember that how you interpret these things is really up to you. I saw a story of a 20 year old who was told his hip sockets were allegedly way too deep and that he would need to have hip replacements by the age of 30. He didn't listen to that advice, retrained his muscles, and he's fine. In the decades when spinal surgery was all the rage and no real research had been done on it, hundreds of thousands if not millions of people had surgeries on on their spines that apparently they didn't need. I even went to a doctor once to get an MRI on my hips just to see what would show up and I was told that I already had mild arthritis and that I should basically stop moving or I might make my hips much, much worse. The doctor told me because of my arthritis, I should not do anything with any impact at all and I shouldn't do anything fast like throwing kicks because I might dislocate my hip joint. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> it's because I dislocated my hip just now. Seriously? No, not seriously. You don't just dislocate your hip by throwing a kick because you have a little bit of arthritis. It's so mind-blowingly dumb. I literally had to stop myself from laughing in that doctor's face. And by the way, I think that was probably five years ago and my hips have gotten better by moving them more, not worse. So I wanna summarize with a thought that I got from Dr. David Hanscom, who wrote a book called Back in Control. Dr. Hanscom is a spinal surgeon who used to do a ton of spinal surgeries until he realized maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Now he recommends you try to avoid surgery as long as possible, focus on training and rehabilitating the muscles all over your body for a bare minimum of six months so that you can do everything possible within your power to avoid undergoing the knife. He even suggests going longer than six months if you can really focus on exercise, relearning how to connect to your body so you understand how to control it and use it in a healthy way. 
And please do not send me your x-rays and MRIs. Please send x-rays of your butt to me. Let me know what you learned from this video by dropping me a comment down below. If you want to rebuild your body at home, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that's going to work for you. For more free videos to help you on your journey out of pain, check these out here. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life should. You know whose butt x-ray I really want to see? I'm afraid to ask. Steve Buscemi. What?